night for football. Not quite as warm as what it was on Saturday. Temperature got up into the 90s. Ryan Longwell set the kickoff for Minnesota. Yeah, he's been, uh, of course, a longtime Green Bay kicker. And three of the top ten kickers of all time changed teams this year. Longwell from Green Bay to Minnesota. Of course, Vanderjack from Indianapolis to the Dallas Cowboys. And Adam Vinatieri from New England to Indianapolis. Of course, Vanderjack, the most accurate field goal kicker in NFL history. And Longwell is eighth on the list. That ball goes into the end zone. And it will be kneeling down Skyler Green for a touchback. And the Cowboys will start off at the 20-yard line. And uh, so a mix up there. And that leaves the head coach none too pleased. There's quite a bit about tonight's game. It's left him none too pleased. Time to recognize tonight's Bank of America Spotlight player. Tonight's player, Rob Petiti. Of course, he made 16 starts a year ago at right tackle. Now the swing tackle. He's been playing at left tackle of the second half of this game. Rob Petiti, tonight's Bank of America player of the game. Bank of America, the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys. Petiti in there at left tackle, and it's Tony Romo at quarterback. Jamaica Rector in motion. Cowboys start out 80 yards away with over six minutes to play in the game. Down a touchdown the hands of Jamaica Rector. Ball that we've seen him catch, Mickey. It's a ball Tony Romo, I'm sure, would like to get down and put in his chest, but again, a ball that hits his hands, and he, we've seen him catch all through camp. Yeah, the ball was a tad high, yep. but it was almost like he was starting to turn and run before he actually caught the ball. Plus, he Man. knew he was getting ready to get yep. healthy. Yep. And, and Tony Romo could have helped him out there by not exposing him and keeping that ball down. Tyson Thompson to pick up the five yards. Rector, the leading receiver for the Cowboys during the preseason coming in, and he's got four catches tonight. He's got 12 catches coming in, 16 for the preseason. Tyson Ch Thompson jogs off. That's a spot that's secure. I, I would think so. Yeah. And if he needed a reminder that it was secure, he that returned kick two kickoffs for yep. pretty decent yardage here. Today. And then what happened on that last kickoff, if you're going with the other guys, they couldn't figure out who was going to return it. <laughs> Fell right in between them. Thompson will be your kickoff return man once again this year. Third down play, and Romo firing downfield. That's Terrence Copper. Sometimes the Vikings got to see that happen. Yeah. Well, that's it. You know, they play that Tampa two, Mickey, that cover two. Safety's deep, corners kind of up, and there's there's a lot of those full shots like that up on the sideline. And I think that's about the third one the Cowboys have hit tonight. There you see, corner in pursuit, and the safety trying to get over, and he can't. Pick up a 24 yards to the 49 as Romo. Moving the team down the field as we are now five minutes to play in this football game. The Cowboys trailing by seven. Cowboys have just had too many yards for just having three points on the scoreboard. There's Rector. You know, holding on this time as a first down. You know, one of the interesting things that Jerry Jones said to uh, you and Mickey and, and Steve Dennis before the game was talking about the quarterback situation and talking about Tony Romo, how he gives this team serious flexibility. If there are some breakdowns on the offensive line, if you put him in the game, it makes uh, the defense... Uh, uh, have to have to understand that that he has some elusiveness uh, yeah. that maybe Drew Bledsoe doesn't have. He almost it seemed like he was saying that the option is there and they were considering perhaps inserting Romo in a game early in the season or at midseason if things aren't going well for the offense. Things aren't going well. I, for I may Tony have been Cook. reading too much into it. I'm not sure, but it was interesting what uh, what he said about the flexibility that Romo gives the team. Oh, what a catch by Sam Hurd. That's that same play again, isn't it? Right, yep. that same defense. They're going to keep working this one to death. 25 yards to Sam Hurd, and he, all he does is he runs by the corner, and Romo's firing the ball in there right on the money, but he gets it there before the safety can get up. And I will say, Willie Oxford, the safety, if he takes a good angle here on Hurd, he probably knocks him out. But there you see, I mean, Hurd is exposed, and Willie Oxford... The Minnesota safety just kind of overruns it a little bit. Pick up a 25 yards, less than four minutes to play in the game. Cowboys threaten at the 14-yard line. Tony Curtis, pass was behind him. Yeah, the two Tonys not hooking up, but up. 
certainly the ball was thrown behind him. Now, I don't know if Romo, Romo's talking to him like I, you're supposed to pivot out there. And we take another look at it. Nah. Uh, so I'm not sure what was supposed to happen. Romo's Obviously. supposed to hit the guy that's wide open. Well, but, the, but he was talking to him like he's supposed to yeah, pivot back Yeah, I know. Out. That's what he it, said. But In fact, it looked like you, you were referring to Terry Glenn last week when you're sitting down, the receiver's sitting down, and he's open, and he, he moved at the last minute, and Romo thought he would still be there. That one, he overshoots the intended receiver, and it's going to bring up a third down. Now Romo's just kind of rushing himself. You can see just a little quick. A little quick with his throws and his, you know, he had time. Is that a just boo I hear in preseason yeah. games? <laughs> yeah, but is, is that for Romo or is that for something we don't see? Hey, you sign a you sign a two-year deal for $3.9 million, you don't throw the ball high. You get booed. <laughs> Boy, he has had a lot of playing time this preseason. Now, I, I do think Parcells was going to play him in this game relatively early to get him working with the first think, team. I but think, oh, yeah. Obviously, he for sure was going to be in the start of the second half. Yeah. Got in earlier because Bledsoe went out because he got his bell rung. To make a record, trying to get some yards after the catch. 340 to play, and uh, it'll be short of the first down. It'll be fourth down coming up here. They're much, talking about a play on the sideline. They're not kicking a field goal here. Much better job there by Romo, just kind of sitting in the pocket, not rushing himself. You can see here on the replay, he was getting a little antsy before. Watch this, though. Comes back. Okay, we're okay. Just Set the pocket, throw it, let my guy go. Now six catches for Jamaica Rector after adding seven in his last game. Fourth down. Cowboys have to get to the four for a first down. We approach the three-minute mark. Terrence Copper, first down. Boy, and that's a real nice job by Terrence Copper. Just the opposite of what we saw. He comes over. He knows he's open. He sits down. Doesn't get excited. Waits for the ball. Romo puts it on his numbers. Copper coming from the outside. Watch him. Just gives him a target to throw to. Gets back up the field. And they get the first down. Nice job by Terrence Copper. He's Copper, had himself a yeah, good he's game. had a nice night. First and goal at the one. It's like a polite and Keelan Kincaid in the backfield. Timeout. Minnesota. The first of the half. Vikings must have seen Lusaka Polite and Keelan Kincaid in the backfield, so they called a timeout. <laughs> this broadcast of the Dallas Cowboys Broadcasting Network brought to you by the great folks at Steak and Shake Restaurant. Stop by your nearest Steak and Shake Restaurant and experience the difference of real steak steak burgers and real milk milkshakes. Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers and proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. 2.25 to play in the game. Cowboys trail 10-3. They've got it with a first and goal at the one-yard line. Keelan Kincaid bunched up. Won't get there. In fact, it looked like he lost the half a yard at least. Should have followed his first instinct. He saw the hole to his left, and he said, you know, I'm supposed to hit it inside. And he went inside, and even though the Cowboys had... Three tight ends in the game and a fullback. They still couldn't get any push on the offensive line. You're going to see it here. You're going to see Kincaid. If he breaks right out left, he's got a touchdown, but he tried to cut it back inside. That is the two-minute warning. Two-minute warning. So two minutes left in this final preseason game of 2006. Cowboys trying to find the end zone when we come back. Check out DallasCowboys.com for the latest news, including live daily broadcasts, fan message boards, and Bill Parcells press conferences. Visit DallasCowboys.com, powered by Neospire, managed hosting for all your Cowboys news. Cowboys have it with a second and goal at the two-yard line, trailing by a touchdown, two minutes to play in the game. And bunched up again, the Minnesota defense. Rises to the occasion, and Tyson Thompson can go nowhere. Clock runs at 150. Third down coming up. I think this is one of those situations also, Mickey, where you might not do in the regular season what the Cowboys might do here. Bill Parcells could easily say, hey, I want to see us try to just jam the ball up there twice, see if our offensive linemen can knock people off. I think in a regular season, you'd probably say, hey, let's try to throw it twice here from the two. I may be wrong. 
especially when you look at those tackles. Jason Fabini at right tackle, Rob Petiti at left tackle. You want to see what they can do. And well, now they're going through wide receivers, so it looks like they will throw it. Third and goal from the two. Stop short of the goal line, thinking about <laughs> pitching it was Sam Hurd. And he was thinking about pitching it to Rob Petiti. Yeah. Is that right? Yes, he was. It's like, Sam, this is in Northern Illinois. Uh, Rob Petiti said, no, don't, no, don't do that. Yeah, Please don't down do that. Too. Not desperation time, it's third down. Look at this, look at this. He's almost, yeah, uh, yeah. Petiti had his hands out. Oh, Sam. 47 seconds, here we are. Fourth and goal at the two. Oh, the suspense. Uh, well, you know, in that entire drive, they had basically three wide receiver offense in the, the length of the field, and then they got down there and tried to do their heavy deal, and that didn't work. All right, less than 30 seconds left. Fourth and goal. Romo has his man. Touchdown, Cowboys. Tyson Thompson. Robo's coming off, and it's like, ah, uh -uh, you're running this two-point conversion. Well, I'd have to stay anyway to hold for the extra point. But, yeah, <laughs> so you're, you're, don't go anywhere, Tony. Well, maybe he thought since he's the quarterback, he didn't have to do that yeah. menial stuff. I, I really thought he was going to run it in there. I thought Mickey, so too. And I think he, I think that was his thought. And finally, he sees Tyson Tubbs and open. Oh, in they the are going to the kick it. I thought they were they bringing in the guys to go for two. It. Oh, my. Maybe they're practicing their fake I'm telling you, point. Parcells treats these games like regular season games. I can't believe this. 17 well. seconds left. And Vanderjack boots the extra point. There's a flag Oh, down. no, they roughed the kicker. Which uh, is not what Parcells wanted to see is kicker going down, Vanderjack. He's gonna, is he going to decline it? <laughs> All right, let me just say, I lost the bet. Okay. Marcel's talking to Bruce DeHaven. There is no foul for running into the kicker. The defensive player was coming off of a block. There is no foul on the play. The extra point is good. Timeout. <laughs> 